in the air. The system's popular in indoor public spaces in the United States. However, there hasn't been much take up here in Australia. Let's find out why. Blue Sky Global CEO Dr. Michael Seitz joins us now live. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, nice to be here. Uh, we'll just wait for your audio to come up. There it is. Uh, talk to us about the difference between air conditioning and air purification. Um, the difference, I think we just got to step back a little bit. So the systems that um, really make the difference uh, when you're trying to capture dangerous pathogens, viruses in the air is really twofold. Uh, the first part is the, the, the ventilation system's air direction. So um, you need to focus on flow of air. And second of all, if you're going to recycle that air, obviously you've got to remove whatever you've um, sucked in before blowing it back into the room. So the entire um, premise to successful air ventilation is in fact not just to put a HEPA filter, say, into an aircon system, but rather to re-engineer the entire flow in a, in a, in a public space so that uh, you essentially create safer conditions. And if we have an opportunity, we can talk a little bit more about what constitutes a, a safer airflow system and um, kind yeah, of- Yeah, well, do talk to us about that there. because it's something that we probably don't think about too much right now, other than during coronavirus and COVID, we're now being told that uh, being in public spaces is, is more important, you know, if the, the air is better and cleaner, et cetera, so talk to us about that and also why you think that it's been taken up in the US, but we haven't so much here in Australia. Okay, so first of all, let me just qualify. It has not been taken up in the USA. Um, we, are, we are a US company. We've had some very strategic um, partners begin to take it up. Um, so here's, here's the way the system works. If you want to really stop um, spreading the disease and be safe indoors, first of all, the virus is being breathed out. So of course there's the large particles which we wear masks for and we have social distancing. So that if somebody should cough or speak loudly or, or something like that, sneeze, that you don't get a direct shower of those droplets. But far more dangerous mm. and, with, and what is really going on with this virus that it spreads through communities so rapidly, almost as though we can't control it, right? We have to stay at home, is that when we're talking um, just like I'm talking right now, I'm continuously ejecting very, very small particles of saliva and potentially mucus, which would contain mm. these viruses. So it's like a raisin cake. So now think about it this way. If, um, if you want to visualize that effect, it's like somebody smoking a cigar and, and you are smelling them smoking a cigar. So now what happens in, a, in, in normal conventional air conditioning systems or ventilation systems or even opening a door is that the draft that you create could be horizontal. So essentially from one right. side of the room to the other side of the room. So you are taking dangerous air. So cigarette smoke being that example. This must be quite frustrating for you to have watched then. Say this again. must be quite frustrating for you to have been watching over the past um, couple of months where people hadn't been wearing face masks to start with while coronavirus was spreading and there seemed to be a lot of um, different medical advice on whether face masks needed to be worn, etc. But from your experience working with your product, you can clearly see that the virus could be spread simply by people speaking and talking. And right. as you say, the breath and, and everything that goes with it being yes. shifted across the room. And let me give you an example of how effective downflow is. So I've described the mechanism of transfer that we are breathing the virus out. Animals that are infected breathe it out and that's how we catch it from each other. And then we have these cross flows and we're saying the only thing that works reliably and works almost perfectly is downflow. You bring the fresh air from above people and you bring it down. So I've had a lot of questions say, well, that sounds great in theory, where's the proof? Well, there have been, I've calculated plus minus 350 million people this year who've taken flights. And a lot of those flights have been transatlantic, transpacific, between countries, yeah. long flights. Do you know that if you go back into the literature of all reported, say, super spreader events, and there are over 200 well, well documented, horrible super spreader events, there is not a single recorded event of there being any spread while somebody has been on a plane. 
And in the early parts mm. of this virus, while it was going around the world, especially in the States, masks were not recommended. People were touching the lavatory, mm. so it wasn't spreading. Mm -hmm. It would have spread in a plane if those were the mechanisms by touching and, and through not wearing masks. What is we unique know about an aircraft, systems they have, yeah. it has downflow mm. in the plane and there's HEPA filtration of any recycled air. So if we take the one case study in the world, which is remarkable, so many people in a small space with various degrees of discipline, right? Mask wearing is hard to enforce you, when people are having their meal or, 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 or taking a beverage. And yet those spaces have zero, zero traceable incidents. That's remarkable. And it, it drives me nuts because here I'm sitting with a large, large machine that could create aircraft conditions in a gym, in a restaurant, or let's get critical, in waiting rooms for somebody mm -hmm. who's getting, who needs an x-ray, who has to go and see the dentist, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in an emergency facility, in old aged care. You know, we have the technology in Blue Sky that we'd gladly, you know, let other people get involved with, build it in Australia, build it in China, build wherever, but people still haven't quite grasped the fact. How would it work? All right, so we talk about we talk about planes, and I take your point there where you're talking about how aircraft, the, the air, as we all hear and can see, the mm -hmm. air comes out from above. Essentially, how would that work in places like hospitals and aged care facilities too? Okay, so it's really challenging. So I'm not sitting here saying, snap your fingers, there we are, we have the system installed. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to take an environment, um, a room, a hall, even a whole stadium, let's go dramatic, you have to bring, you have to put a large, large machine that can move a lot of air. So typically the recommendation that I give people is 12 times an hour minimum, every five minutes, you want to replace the room air and filter it while mm -hmm. you're at it. So that's what they do in planes. Right. So you'd bring in large pipe network from above, which you could really put in and bring in in an architectural way. And then you have suction from the lower perimeter areas. So what happens, it's like a rain shower. The air is gently, it's laminar, so you don't feel a wind from above, but the air is continuously, slowly moving down towards the floor. Mm. So as you're breathing, the air is being pushed down. You don't want it to go left and yeah. right and affect... You know, it drives me nuts. So now in the schools, they've got all these yeah. little room machines standing in the corner of a classroom. And this is the thing, right? Exactly. It's pushing it across as opposed to pushing it down. We have to leave it there. We're out of time, I'm afraid. But Dr. Michael Seitz from Blue Sky Global, really appreciate it. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Take care. All right. We will take a break.